In this video, we are talking about computing line integrals. The particular application I'm looking at is Stokes' theorem, but this video is just about the general mechanics of taking this line integral, and specifically taking a line integral around a closed contour. The first step, as typical, is to choose a coordinate system. Then we're going to choose the correct differential length for the coordinate system. We then take the dot product defined by my integral equation above. Then I'm going to break the contour into pieces that are easy to integrate over, evaluate for each piece, and sum the results to get the total solution. We are going to refer to this table to find the correct differential length, which is in the first row. We will just choose the correct differential length for our coordinate system. Let's ignore the rest of this table for now. We will use it in follow-up videos. Let's apply our procedure to an example. In this example, it should be clear from the definition of the vector field that I'm going to choose the cylindrical coordinate system. Looking at the contour I'll be integrating around, I notice that in the curved part, I have a constant radius, but the angle phi is changing. In the straight parts, the radius will change, but the angle will stay the same. Next, we will choose the correct differential length. Since this is the cylindrical coordinate system, our dl is r hat dr plus phi hat r d phi plus z hat dz. Now, we will take the dot product of my vector field and the differential length. If you need a refresher on dot products, check out my video on the dot and cross products. Plugging in values, we will see that the result will be the multiplication of the r hat components summed with the multiplication of the phi hat components. Since the vector field has no z components, that part will be zero. Now, let's break that closed contour into pieces where the integration is easier. Let's call the part from x equals 0 to 2, section 1, the curved part, section 2, and the part from y equals 2 to 0, section 3, where we are very careful to follow the arrows around the contour. In section 1, the radius varies from 0 to 2, and the angle phi is constant at 0. In section 2, the radius is constant at 2, and the angle phi varies from 0 to pi over 2. Finally, in section 3, the radius varies from 2 to 0, and the angle phi is constant at pi over 2. Now, let's evaluate the integral for each piece. For section 1, I integrate over r equals 0 to 2, where phi is set to 0. Since phi does not change over this segment, d phi is equal to 0, and that part of the integral goes away. We are left with a fairly simple integral to get 4. For section 2, r is constant at 2, and phi changes from 0 to pi over 2. Again, since r does not change, dr is 0, and I can integrate quickly to get an answer of 4. For section 3, r changes between 2 and 0, and phi is constant at pi over 2. Since phi doesn't change, d phi is 0. The cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so the result of this integral is also 0. Now that I have the results from each piece, I'll sum to get 4 plus 4 equals 8. To summarize, we're going to follow these steps to compute a line integral in this context. There are a lot of nuances I can't cover in a 5 minute video, but this should help you with some of the mechanics of calculating Stokes' theorem in electromagnetics. That's all for now, hope you'll be back soon.